more I got to get to. But uh, so we'll just get in what I got in my heart tonight. So uh, let's pray and then we'll go to the word and we're going to talk some more about angels tonight. Actually, Aspects of Abundance is our series and we're going to talk about angels. So Father, we thank you tonight. We come reverently before your word and we thank you for the Holy Spirit who is our helper. And we ask you, Lord, to give us eyes to see so things that we've never seen before, ears to hear so we can see and hear and understand and if there's areas in our heart where we need to make adjustments, we'll be able to do it, and we'll have faith to act. And so we thank you, Father. Thank you for the Holy Spirit to give us utterance, and that as we've studied and prepared, Lord, you'll just bring things to light, and Lord, we'll understand and we'll grow, and uh, we'll put things into motion that need to be into motion. And so we thank you for your word tonight in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, I love the word. All right, I know you do. And uh, praise God for the Word. You know, the, the Word, I said it, I was just talking while the, the Bible is called, the, uh, the Word is called the Word of Righteousness. Hallelujah. So it'll instruct you in righteousness. Oh, 2 Timothy 3.15 says, All Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for uh, instruction, correction, reproof, and training. Listen to this. Training in righteousness. Hallelujah. So we need to be trained. In, uh, in what? Doing right things. All right? Now, uh, you might just... Uh, we're going to go to 2 Thessalonians. I'll give you a verse over here. But, but we've been, uh, we for, for several weeks, uh, I just got it in my heart to talk about, I had this phrase about aspects of abundance. And so we've talked about, uh, we've talked about excellence for a few weeks and we've talked about attitude for a few weeks. And then uh, just seemed to be right, let's talk, to talk about angels. So we've spent a couple of Wednesday nights talking about angels. Everybody say angels. Hallelujah. How many of you know uh, it's a good topic? Because, you know, when you think about an aspect of abundance, in other words, can angels, and really, we're, we're really going, I'm going to hammer something home tonight. We're going to talk about money and finances in connection with angels. Anybody interested in some money? Anybody interested in getting some more? So you can be a blessing. So you can, so we're going to talk about this a little more in, uh, in detail because that's the direction I really got. And, and I think if we, if you'll uh, receive the word and plant it, it'll help you and you can get some things activated that maybe hasn't been there before. Hallelujah. We're not talking about angels. Now, we're not talking about angels going and taking some money out of somebody's bank account and putting it in yours. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> All right. But, but, but they, they've got lots of ways of doing things. God knows where the money is. Let me put it like that. All right. And so, so an aspect, and we're talking about abundance, an aspect actually means a, a part of or a feature of something. So we're, we're just looking at different angles of how we can actually tap into the supply that God has for us. Hallelujah. And, and now listen, I, 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 we, my wife and I, we've been pastor now 25 years, and I started back in youth ministry in 1983, and we had four children, and I've seen God just help us supernaturally, um, you know, over the years. We've been married 30, when I got married, 86, what is that, 31 years? Man, you can learn a few things. But, but, but I can tell you, God has just, has just moved supernaturally time and time again. Because why? Well, we, we've trusted him and because we've been learning and growing in the word. Amen? And maturing in the word. That's an important that you mature in the word. You want to grow in the word and, uh, and develop your faith so you can release faith. Faith is, for, faith is to be acted upon. And again, one of the main ways, and you'll see it tonight, when we're talking about releasing our faith is with our confession. And with our words, what we're saying, I'll, I'll get in a little bit more of that part next week. Um, but, you know, as I'm just studying, man, all of a sudden it don't take me long. And I'm like, well, this is about as far as we're going to get tonight. And then we'll have to move on. So, um, but again, it can be an aspect, can be a specific way in which something can be considered. All right. So why would we talk about angels when it comes to abundance? Because they can help you get there. How many like to just get to a place of abundance? Now, abundance meaning you have plenty you have more than enough, and God is a God of abundance. He's a God of plenty. I just saw something, I saw something on, because uh, I look at the weather on the Weather Channel, and they were, had a video of these little bitty, they're called, uh, I forget the flower now, uh, you ever seen little praying mantises? They're, they're these little bitty, tiny, uh, I forget what is the name of that flower, but they look like little flowers. But they're, they're little mantises, they, they, whatever that flower, it's a flower, man, little bitty things, colorful. They, you, you'd think they were little flowers, but they're just bugs. I'm thinking, how awesome is God? I mean, they're kind of cute. I mean, they're pretty. I, you just have them all dressed up all over you. You know, they had them all, this guy had them all in his hand. I was thinking, how, how amazing is God? I mean, that he would just create a little, a little bug that looks like a flower. You know what I'm saying? 
I mean, he's, but, but think about God, all that's out there, he's just, he's such, he's so abundant, and that's, that's why he didn't create man first and then start creating stuff, because if man would have been involved, man would have said, oh, that's good enough right there, Lord, that's plenty, that's, that's good, you don't, you don't have to do it, you know, one monkey's enough, I mean, but you've got 20 species, 40 species of monkey, but anyway, so, so abundance has to do with supply. And God is very interested in our supply. Remember John 10, 10, Jesus came that, I, that you might have what? Life and life abundantly. You think life abundantly would affect you financially as well? Sure it would. Hallelujah. We're not going to take up an offering tonight, so just relax. We can talk about money in church. Don't have to take up an offering, whatever like that. We'll just help, help, help you tonight, all right? So, so an overlooked aspect of how maybe we could get uh, walk in more abundance live in more abundance, get things flowing, uh, is, is taking a look at angels. So that's what we've been doing. And we, we have divine help available to us. So, uh, you know, I preached years ago. Matter of fact, I, I, I preached a couple of messages way back in, I was looking at some notes, I think way back in like 95 or 97. I pre- that's, and I think I haven't preached on angels since, you know, it's been 20 years. <laughs> I said, maybe we should look at it again. Anyway, so uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, 12.22 says that there's myriads, thousands upon thousands of angels. And, and so we've seen that they have, uh, they have uh, assignments and functions, and we'll look a little bit more at that. Um, just uh, one of the things I was thinking uh, that I came across, angels are, are mentioned about 37 times just in the books of history, which would be Joshua, Judges, 1st, 2nd Samuel, 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Um, so these are just, you know, there's almost 300 references uh, about 167 of them are just in the New Testament. Now, a lot of those are in the book of Revelation. A lot of angelic activity in the book of Revelation, you know, for everything from seals and trumpets and a lot of different things. Angels are involved. But, but, but they're, they're, if, if, you, if we could just, if we just had the veil removed and we saw the warfare and the angelic and demonic activity that was going on in our world, it'd probably just freak you out. That's probably why God don't let us see it. You'd just be going, I mean, if you, if you probably walked into some places and you could see all the demons that were there. But see, most people don't think about that. Most people aren't even aware. They're not even thinking if they go into a place where they shouldn't be that it's infested with demons. They don't think about that because we're too carnal. In other words, we're, the Bible tells us, hey, uh, if you've been seated with heck, Colossians 3, 1, remember? It, Therefore, if you've been seated with Jesus in heaven, fix your eyes on things above where Christ is seated in heavenly places. In other words, be, be spiritually minded. Be aware of what's going on and, uh, and that, that angels are on our side. But I'm convinced if you could see some of the stuff and then just take a look at Daniel, I mean, that's Old Testament. Daniel was praying. We're going to talk a little bit more about prayer next week too. So, but Daniel, a lot, of, a lot of angels are involved with people who pray. So if you don't pray that much, that's probably why you, you, you know, anyway, I won't go there right now. That's probably why, you, you know, angels are sitting around trying to figure out what they're going to do. But Daniel was praying uh, 21 days, fasting and praying uh, for Israel. It was a form of intercession. He's, he, he wants to know what's going to happen, and he's interceding for them. And, and you know, and that's when, uh, when uh, uh, Michael uh, appears and said that, for, you know, ever since his words had been heard, he had come. Uh, to, to bring Daniel uh, the message, you know, and, and that Michael had been fighting, you know, for, you know, there's warfare going on. It took him 21 days to bust through. <laughs> so, so there's some warfare going on. He was fighting with the prince of Persia. So, you know, there's a, there's a, whole, um, there's a whole demonic realm. Uh, if you read Ephesians 6, there's principalities and powers and rulers of this world, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. So, I mean, if, you just, if we did a little more detailed study, you'd find out, you know, uh, I think we said uh, cherubs are the highest form of angels that there are. And now here's what you need to understand. Uh, Lucifer, Satan, was, he was probably number one under, he was probably the, uh, he, the is, I think it's Ze- Zechariah that says he was the anointed cherub that covers, but he fell. A cherub is the highest. Also, the cherubs are ones that have, uh, have wings, and there's two cherubs that oversee the mercy seat. Uh, matter of fact, if you want to know, so, uh, not all angels have wings, and they're not little fat babies with bows and arrows. But not all angels have wings. Matter of fact, the lower levels of angels uh, don't have wings because, uh, you know, they can appear in human form. The Bible says be careful that, that you entertain angel, uh, strangers. You know, you might be entertaining angels unaware, you know. So you never know when you just, so you want to be nice. You never know, you know, be nice to people. Amen. 
Uh, but but uh, but uh, really, I think some of the and the, the reason that angels have wings, some of those angels have wings, is not because so they can fly. They don't need the angel wings to fly. They can just appear and go and do. Um, so uh, most likely, it is for either some form of protection or when they're in the presence of God to cover themselves, because God's a holy God. Angels are called holy. And in the presence of God, there's some that are just, they never leave God's presence. They just cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. They fly two, two, they got six wings, two they fly, two they cover their face, and two they cover their feet. And so they're just ever in the presence of God. And so you got, you got cherubim, you, and then you got, uh, you got seraphim, uh, you know, and then you've got uh, archangels. Though those archangels, those would be like uh, Gabriel, Michael, uh, the archangels. Uh, warring angels, uh, messenger angels. So, so anyway, there's some different things. Uh, um, Jeremiah, with the exception of Jeremiah, all the major prophets alluded to the ministry of angels. Of the minor prophets, Hosea and Zechariah speak of angels. So, uh, one thing that's interesting, and I might touch on a little bit later, uh, since Pentecost, we're, the church age, we're in a different dispensation. In other words, our, our uh, uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll touch on it a little bit later, but but we are, we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. How many of you understand that? So even the, the involvement of angels uh, in Old Testament, you understand there's, Israel was, was God's people in the Old Testament. You had to understand. I mean, so there was a lot of activity uh, going on with Israel all the time. And so you got, you got angels involved with Abraham. You got angels involved with Moses. You got angels involved with Daniel. You got angels involved with Jacob. I mean, so there's... But, but all of a sudden, after, but, but I'm going to direct... You see a pattern if you get on a certain uh, flow or um, you just begin to see things. You know, it's important that we see things. Because uh, if you don't see it, it, it doesn't help you. That's, that's a form of revelation. But, uh, but we'll talk maybe uh, Jacob here in a little bit. But, but anyway, uh, but we're, we're in, the, in the church age. Remember we gave you, what was the scripture? Um, I'll jump over here. Remember in John chapter 1, verse 51, uh, Jesus referring to Nathaniel. He was talking to Nathaniel. Uh, when he saw him under the fig tree, and he said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, you will see the heavens open and the angels of God ascending and descending on the Son of Man. So, in other words, there's a lot of activity. Now, uh, Jesus uh, died, rose again in heaven with God, but, but we are the church, and, and he's the head, we're the body, so there's still activity. There's, the body of Christ is still in operation on the earth today. That's why we're called Christians. And so uh, we're anointed. Jesus said, I'm going to give you uh, my anointing. I'm going to give you my name. Go in my name. Go in my anointing. So, so we have angels assisting us and helping us. Got the picture? Uh, and so, so there's a lot of activity. But, um, but again, we, we need to be more aware and we need to be, uh, uh, give them permission to do things specifically, and when you understand who you are, then you understand why you can do that. All right, I said, when you understand who you are, who are you? You're a joint heir with Christ Jesus. And I, and I'll mention some things here in just a minute, and I'll come I'll come back to that. But but remember, uh, uh, well, go to uh, well. Let me give you this first. We we talked about just some functions of angels. Uh, they, they have different assignments. Uh, are you in 2 Thessalonians chapter? I've got the scripture up here for you if, you if you don't have your Bible. But verse 7 says, The Lord shall be revealed from heaven. This is 2 Thessalonians 1, 7. The Lord shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire. In other words, when the Lord comes, when he comes, this is his second coming, not when he raptures the church, but in his second coming, when he comes and he's revealed from heaven with, with, with his, notice, mighty angels. You see, many times we'll see in Psalm 103 that the angels are mighty. That means they're powerful. I mean, it just took one to wipe out 185,000 uh, of the army of the enemy back in Isaiah 36, the 36th chapter when Hezekiah was, was uh, you know, getting threatened. And Hezekiah took that problem to the Lord. Uh, anyway, but it says uh, the mighty angels in flaming fire. In other words, they, when they come, they will be dealing out judgment. And if you read that, you'll see that there. We won't go, uh, that's a different uh, message right here. But, but some other functions of angels we mentioned were, are just protection to guard you and to keep you. Matthew 18, 10 talks about uh, a guardian angel. Uh, every single person has a guardian angel. What Jesus said, uh, and so uh, Psalm 91, 11 talks about uh, they will 
they're, they're there for protection. If you read Psalm 91 in light of, of the protection of God, the blood of Jesus, and, the, and how does God do what He does in the earth? Listen, that's what, part of what these angels' job, the angels' jobs are to help us and to protect us and to guide us and to fulfill the plan of God for our life. How do you think God just does what He does supernaturally? Well, he's got angels, messengers. Hallelujah. Now, we don't worship them. And we don't necessarily talk to them. That's why we'll talk about prayer a little bit because you'll find out the more you'll pray, the more you'll have some uh, divine assistance. All right? So we'll get to that next week. But, but we talk, here's, here's the main one. You need to see this one. Hebrews chapter 1, we share it a lot in connection sometimes with tithes and offerings because it, this is important and this will help us as we, where we want to go tonight. But in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, uh, let's, let's go to Hebrews if you've got your Bible. And if you don't, uh, let me just read something here. Uh, before we get to verse 14. Notice what it says in verse 2. He, this is Hebrews 1, 2. In the last days, God has spoken to us in His Son, whom He appointed. And notice, now notice, here, here's what I want you to see. He appointed heir of all things. Who did God appoint heir of all things? His Son. Who's His Son? Jesus. So you've got to get this. Jesus... He appointed heir of all things. So that means all things must have been in existence at the time Jesus came. Everything that needed to be appointed over all things. So when Jesus was raised up, God appointed him heir, watch this now, of all things. Now if you go over to Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. Well, just hold your place. Let's, let's just take a side journey here. Colossians chapter 12. I mean, Colossians 1.12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to share in the inheritance. Everybody say the inheritance of the saints in light. Well, Jesus has been appointed heir, now watch this, of all things. This, this is part of where I was getting some of my Christmas message. <laughs> so I'm reading here, looking at this. But he's been appointed heir of all, listen to this. You can't be an heir if you hadn't been born. Are you here? So one thing you got to understand about Jesus it was he. That's why he's called the Son of God. He's he's man, but he's God. All right. So he was, he created everything, but then he stepped into his own creation, and he was born of a virgin. God became man, became flesh. Word became flesh. So then he became what heir of all things. Now what does the Bible say? Because we're in Christ. Who did he do that for? Why did he do that? He came for us. He did it for us. So now we are joint heirs with Christ Jesus. We're blessed with Abraham's blessing. We're of the seed of Abraham. For in, for in Christ, we're blessed with Abraham's blessing, right? I mean, you don't have time to go all that direction. But now, but all things, that if you keep reading, all things belong to us. Why? Because he's big brother. All right? Man, that's a whole something here. Uh, but but he, he's, he's, he's been made heir of all things. What does all mean? So if you're in Christ, and you're a joint heir with Christ Jesus, what are you heir of? All things. Would that make you rich? Would that make you blessed? Beyond? All things belong to you. So when Paul makes those statements like all things are yours, what does that mean? But if you think, well, I don't know how are we going to make it? And why? You, you got your eyes on the wrong thing. You need to start recognizing who you are and who's, and who's available for you, to help you, all right? So, let's keep reading here just a minute. And he is the radiance of his glory, the exact representation of his nature, and upholds all things by the word of his power. When he made purification of sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much better than the angels. And then notice this while we're here. And he has inherited a more excellent name than they. Say a more excellent name. Now, let me just give you a little something here. I was thinking about this today, and I'll just throw this out here. This is free little side thought about the name of Jesus. You know, uh, so, you know, people are afraid to use the name of Jesus. Did you know that? Matter of fact, even religious people, bless their heart, they want to say, in Christ's name, we pray. Well, what, are you afraid to say Jesus or what? I mean, he's been given a name which is above every name. What's the name? Jesus. Jesus is his humanity, is the name. It, it, that was, that's, that's, that Jesus is, is his humanity. All right? There, that's the human part, but there's a deity part to it. But Jesus is the name which is above every name. 
So you can't be afraid to say the name of Jesus. And I know some people just grow up because they just pray that's how they were taught and, and so forth. But uh, I'll just give you something else. You know, Catholicism, one of the areas of Catholicism is they say Gee, Mary is the mother of the Son of God. No, he's not because he already existed. How can she be the mother of someone that already existed? Amen. She's just the mother of the human part of him. Amen. You follow me? There's the human side. There's the divine side. I'm getting into my Christmas message here. <laughs> anyway, so... But notice, he inherited a more excellent name, which is Jesus. Everybody just say Jesus. Jesus. For to which of the angels did he ever say, Thou art my son? Today I have begotten thee, and again I will be... Now, watch this. People will say, well, you think... Oh, man, there's so much here. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And when he again brings the firstborn... Everybody say firstborn. Firstborn. Now, if there's a firstborn, that means there's a second and third and fourth and fifth. That's us, all right? He says, and let the angels of God worship him, and of the angels, now notice, of the angels, he says, who makes his angels winds, and his ministers a flame of fire. So, so you've got angels, are, are, he makes them like wind and fire. Hallelujah. So, now skip over to, for time's sake, go over to the 14th verse, and we'll catch back up to the notes here. First, Hebrews 1.14 says, are they, talking about angels now, are they not all ministering spirits? Are you, in other words, another, another word for minister is servant. So they're serving spirits. Everybody say serving spirits. Now, who are they serving? Now, if you listen to the first part of this message, I said all that to get to this part. Who are, the, who are they serving? Heirs of salvation. Heirs. Joint heirs. Who's the joint heirs? So who are angels interested in helping? Why? Because you're a joint heir. What, how, so that means if you're a child of God, you qualify, right? So you want to make so you we want to work figure out how do we how do we how do we get them really busy? How do we get them moving and working and helping us? Hallelujah! So we'll get to that part. All right? Are they not all ministering spirits? Spirits sent out to render service. How many like for them to be real busy when it comes to you and yours rendering service? Hallelujah. For the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Now, we've inherited salvation. We're joint heirs. We're inheritors of all that God has. I mean, I mean you just begin to put more and more together in a whole other direction here. But, but really, we could just say anything that blesses, helps, aids, or assists that would help us, our kids, our family, they're on it. They're ready to go. They're ready to help. They're ready to assist you in the plan of God for your life. Hallelujah. So, they, they, can, they can help in terms of areas of strength for a season or a phase. Maybe there's something God's designed, you know, especially ministry or something God's called you to do. Uh, he's going to help you do it. Because we're not to lean. I mean, the first thing we think of when we feel like we're supposed to do something is, well, how can I do that? Or do I have the ability? And, you know, but if God calls you to do something, he's going to help you. And it's not your job to figure out how. <laughs> and if he tells you to give something, it's not your job. Oh, you know, we start looking. Oh, you know. But, but you, you want to be quick to obey, all right? They come with instructions or in messages. We've looked about divine connections, supernatural setups. I mean, uh, I just believe that, that when we're believing God for help and for favor, that's why I confess favor all the time. Psalm 5 says, his favor goes before me like a shield. Well, I'm going to declare that. His favor goes before me like a shield. What does that mean? How's God going to put his favor? He's going to do things for me. I have angelic assistance to help us. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever comes up, an emergency or a situation, first thing you want to be doing is start speaking the word. Not worrying, oh, what are we going to do? That's the, la that's the last thing you want to say. What are we going to do? You should say, God, what are you going to do? What you going to do about this? You going to let your kids sit out here? No. God's gooder than that. Amen. <laughs> so, so we're going to have to be aware of the function of angels. What, what, what are they doing? And, and be faithful. We talked about, you know, it's important that we, when we understand this, we're faithful to, to work with them and to cooperate and to dispatch uh, the ones that are, that are involved with our life to help us, and they will. They want to. Matter of fact, they get excited about it. When you, it's like this, when you step out in faith, they're excited. 
When you're, when you're doing the will of God, they're going, oh yeah, we got something to work with. Favor, blessing, and we're really going to talk about a little bit more about the blessing side and the financial part. But we want to partner with them. We want to partner with those angels that are assigned by God to cooperate with them, activate them in our lives. All right, now, let's go to Exodus, the 23rd chapter. It seemed like a, a, this is about uh, Exodus 23. Now, watch this. I saw this um, this year, actually, way back in January. Never seen it before. Read it, read it, read it, read it. Never seen it before. Exodus 23. Now, uh, a lot of scholars believe that, that the Old Testament, when it says the angel of the Lord, that was Jesus. Um, but I don't know that, uh, that I would necessarily agree with all of those references because uh, if that's the case, in, in Isaiah, the 36th chapter, uh, it says the angel of the Lord wiped out 185,000 of the enemy. So if that was Jesus, he was rough in the Old Testament. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we know he cleansed the temple in the New Testament, but, I mean, that's wiping out 185,000. So, um, anyway. But in Exodus 23, 20, watch this. It says, Behold, now God has uh, brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, and, and they're, they're, they're called to go into the promised land. And God says, I'm, you know, he, in this, you read all of this in context. He said, I'm going to lead you in the land and guide you and drive out the nations before you and so forth. But he said, Behold, I'm going to send an angel before you. Now, notice, to guard you. Along the way. And bring you into the place which I have prepared. Now, and as I was thinking about that, you, does God have a place for you? Yes. I mean, the Bible talks about a wealthy place. Amen. Um, God has a, God, uh, we're, we're obviously Ephesians 2.10. We're custom designed. He's got a plan for us, which we know is good. Amplified says, live in the good life. Ephesians 2.10, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. Plans that he's already prearranged and made ready ahead of time for us to walk in, live in the good life. That's what the Amplified says. So, so we know God's got a will for our life, and the will of God has to be dynamic. It has to be the best thing that we could ever experience because you don't want to do anything. Uh, you, you don't want anything but the perfect will of God for your life, and that's why we're talking about renewing our minds because or you finding out and discovering the good and acceptable and perfect will of God is in connection with you renewing your mind. That's Romans 12, verse 2. So, think about this. He said, he said I'm going to send the angel before you to guard you along the way. Hallelujah. And to bring you into the place which I have prepared. Now, notice, notice verse 23. For my angel will go before you and bring you into that land. Now, again, think about this. Just in the New Testament, if you just think naturally... The Bible, you know, God says he will perfect what concerns us. Or Paul said it like this in Philippians. He who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Well, that's going to mean everything about you, everything that's involved with you. All right? So now watch this. Now he's going to bring you into the land. Now, if you look at the 25th verse, I, I, this is what I saw that was really, you, you begin to see two different things. God's talking about this angel. And he says, but you shall serve the Lord your God. Everybody say, that'd be me. And I notice, and he will bless your bread and water. But, and I, notice we have a he and an I. That means two separate people. So when he's talking about the angel, you serve the Lord and he. So you get busy serving the Lord, seeking first the kingdom of God. You make sure you're serving the Lord, putting him first, and he will bless your bread and water. And I, well, why? Because he's the healer. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord our healer. And I will take sickness away from the midst of you and fulfill the number of your days. And we know that's all good right there, right? He said, I'll remove sickness from your midst. So you, got, you see that? There's a he and there's an I. Everybody say there's a he and an I. He. Who's he talking about, the he? He's talking about the angel. Helping you, assisting, blessing what? Your bread and your water. Well, that'd be, that'd, that'd have to do with... Uh, uh, your livelihood, I mean, bread and water, you know. Remember, the Bible says, uh, we talked, quoted it a while ago, 2 Corinthians 9, 10 says, he who supplies bread for food, amen, and multiplies your seed for sowing, so he gives you bread and food, water, amen. Now, so you see a connection here with blessing, blessing. Everybody say bless. See, that's the key right there. To bless means to empower. How many like to be blessed? So there's a blessing. 
Remember when you bring your tithes and offerings in the storehouse, he said, prove me and I'll pour out for you a blessing. It's interesting there that the angel's involved with the blessing part. Blessing your bread and water. See, you want your bread and your water blessed. <laughs> All right? And he said, now remove. But, but other, the good part about that is that that's, in a nutshell, um, that's, that's salvation. What? Redeemed from poverty, sickness, spiritual death. When Jesus, remember when, he, uh, when they wanted to drive Jesus off a cliff, the reason they were so mad at him, he gave him two pictures. One was supernatural provision, Elijah being sent to, the, to a widow in Serapath, you know, during a famine, and then also, and Naaman dipping in the River Jordan. Naaman dipping, and he was healed. So you see a picture of provision, and you see a picture of healing. That is redemption. What's Abraham's blessing? Abraham, if you look at the, the blessing of Abraham, he was, he was rich. He was blessed. He was healthy. When the children of Israel came out of Egypt, there wasn't one sick person among them, and they went out with silver and gold. That's a picture of redemption. God wants you blessed, and he wants you healthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You got the picture here? Yeah. All right. Now, uh, one more story. Uh, actually, a couple. Uh, Genesis 24. Now, think about this just a minute. We're just talking about angels here. Genesis 24, you don't have to read the whole story. It takes a whole chapter. Genesis 24 is when um, Abraham sent his servant to go get a, a wife for his son Isaac. And so if you know the story, it's a really wonderful story. It's a great picture of the walk of faith that the believer, uh, we walk, because, uh, uh, you know, that, that's a, the, the servant's a type of the spirit. You got the father and the spirit, go, and he's, he's developing, he's bringing a bride for his son. And so now we haven't, you know, Rebecca hadn't seen him, but she says, I'll go. She hasn't seen him. Amen. All right, and so, but, but we know the story. Abraham, when he, he, he tells his servant, when he, he says, promise me that you'll go and you'll take a, uh, you'll take a wife for my son, from, from my relatives, and they do. And he said, and, how, and the servant says, how will I know? Well, you know what? And Abraham says, my angel will go before you. Matter of fact, the specific verse here is verse 40. It says, the Lord before whom I have walked will send his angel with you to make your journey successful. Now, just think about it. As I was thinking about this story again, think about how did the angel get involved in this story? I mean, we can't see, we don't see the behind the scenes. We just know when Abraham's servant got to the well, he's in the evening. He says, okay, he knows all the, you know, the, 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 the young, the ladies, whoever, they're coming out to get water, so he knows where to go. But maybe the angel, you know, but anyway, but it just so happens that, that Rachel just happens to be the one that comes up at the right place at the right time. Now, some people say, well, that's just coincidence. Yeah, but that's how angels work. It must have, must have made sure that he was successful. All right, so I just wanted you to see that. Our, and the key is our expectation is God's invitation to get things moving. When you understand that they're available and they want to help you and God's word becomes the key, and as we're speaking that, uh, they start moving uh, remember, God doesn't move, God doesn't work in our life without permission. He knows your needs before you ask, but you're supposed to, still supposed to ask. He's touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but he says, come. Come boldly. All right? I said it last week. I'm going to say it one more time. It's a dangerous statement. Well, if it's the Lord's will, a lot of people just go through life with that. Well, if the Lord wants me to have it, I'll have it. If it's the Lord's will, it'll automatically happen. No, it does not, stuff does not fall on you like ripe cherries falling off the tree. Or apples or peaches or whatever you want like to call it. You have to make sure that you are cooperating with the word, doing the word. Speaking the word, confessing the word, knowing what to say and when to say it. Having a prayer life, having a relationship with God. I know that sounds real 101, but you'd be surprised how many people just kind of float through life and just thinking, well, if God, you know, if God wants, you know, wants it to happen, it'll happen. No, God, God's not willing that any perish. He wants everybody saved. Did you know that? Matter of fact, uh, let me just give you that. Uh, that scripture is in first. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was looking for that, and I now figured out where it was. Look at this. Uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, woo, I, was trying to, I was trying to remember where this was before service started. The Lord knew what he was going to get it to, though. He kept asking the Holy Spirit, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? But in 1 Timothy 2, when he's talking about prayer, he says, first of all, uh, I urge you that entreaties and petitions and 
prayers and thanksgiving be made on behalf of, of all men for kings and all who are in authority in order that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. And in dignity. This, is a good, this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior. Now notice verse 4, who desires all men to be saved. Right there, God desires all men to be saved. So that's his will, that's his desire. Well, if it's going to happen, why don't it just happen? Well, because people have to receive. People have to hear the word. People have to have faith and call out. But notice this, this is what jumped out. And to come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants people to come. He wants us to come to the knowledge of the truth. That means, that means some people don't want, to, want the truth. And knowing the truth becomes a great privilege. God wants people saved and to what? Really, you can say this, God wants, it, wants, once you get saved, he wants you to grow up and come to the knowledge of the truth. So that means if you don't have the knowledge where you're ignorant, that's where the devil gets busy. Did you catch that one? What did he say, Martha? Where you're ignorant, the, the devil's going to be real active. Stealing, killing, and destroying. All right? All right. Let's keep going. So I said, uh, it's a dangerous statement or a thought process that, well, if, God's, if it's God's will, it'll happen. But you need to know what God's will is. You need to know who you are. You need to know how to exercise your authority. You need to know how to speak the word. You need to know what the word says, that you are a joint heir, and that you can speak the word. And we're going to get to that, all right? We're coming up to that. Now, let's talk about, here we go. Give me just a few more minutes. Activate. Okay, here we go. Go to Psalm 103. We touched on it, but, we're going, but this, is, this, is the, this is this. How, how can we get angels helping us in our finances? Anybody interested in that? We already want to, we actually, I mean, we want to work in protection-wise, Psalm 91, we've talked about that, but, but how do we get them moving and working in our life? It, it comes through you speaking the word, you um, confessing the word in an area, in a specific situation, called a faith confession, all right? So, Psalm 103, verse 20, now watch this, this gets really good. Psalm 103, verse 20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, mighty in strength. We noticed before that they are mighty. Mighty in strength, who perform what? Now notice this, who perform what? What do the angels perform? So if you say the word, what do you think they're going to be doing? If you say the word in connection with your situation and for your life, then they're going to get busy performing the word. What if you're not saying the word? That's how we're going to talk about our prayer life next week. So you might bring some, some, some steel-toed boots. Some cushion for your bow honey. Because we can all, probably all bump up our prayer life a little bit. <laughs> but why? Because if you're not, listen, if you don't pray, what's the chances of you uh, quoting the word or uh, using the word in a situation? Or let's, let's, let me throw this one out there. What have you specifically asked God for today? Have you asked God for anything? And did you have a scripture to back up why you were asking for it? Or that gave you a reason to ask for it? Or should we say that, what have you asked God for in the last week with a scripture to back it up? Why he would give it to you? Oh, now, now it's starting to hurt, ain't it? What about the last month? James says you have not because you ask not. Another reason prayer doesn't get answered is because we ask with selfish motives to, to consume it on our own lust. But, uh, so that's why Paul says, first of all, when you pray, pray for kings and all who are in authority. And so there's some things there. And then pray for, for others and for law. And then, you know, get, get, get your eyes out. And it's okay to pray for your stuff, but, but get your eyes out there. Stretch out, stretch out a little bit. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll talk about some of that next week. But now notice here. They, they, they perform his word. Now notice, obeying the voice of his word. Now that doesn't mean the word that's coming from God. God has given us his word. Isaiah 55, God has given us. God's word in our mouth is just as powerful as God's word in his mouth. His word, he, Jesus is called the word of life. He is the word. And we are to take the word. We're to develop. We're to renew our minds in the word. We're to, we're to, we're to get so... The word's so much in us that it comes out because the tongue and the heart are connected. So when you get your heart full, it'll come out. And you know what to say. You have a response. You have a platform. We've talked about you develop your platform of response. And, and so they obey the voice of his word. Verse 21, bless the Lord, all you his hosts who serve him. Now notice, doing his will. 
You might underline that, doing His will. Now, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, this is a prayer verse. If we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us. We have confidence. If we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us. And if we know that He hears us, we know we have the request. Well, how does God answer the request? He got angels that perform and delight in doing His will, carrying out His will. And when you're asking in line with His will, you can expect an answer. Hallelujah. And you don't have to go out with goosebumps or, or, or a feeling like, well, I wonder if the Lord heard me. Well, if you ask in line with the word, you're asking in faith. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you will and it'll be done. And enough for you to figure out how. I know you want to. I ever, we all go, well, how's, how's he going to do that? And you think it's too difficult, but God says nothing's too difficult for God. Amen. Nothing's too hard for God. All right? So they serve him, serve him doing his will. Doing His will. His will. His will. So if you're involved in the will of God and you're wanting to see the will of God come to pass and making sure the will of God is being done and you're confessing and you're speaking about things concerning God's will for you, then they're involved. Amen. Now let's take this, go a step further with this. It's our responsibility to put voice to the Word. Amen. Hallelujah. Now hold your place here. We're going to come back because I'm going to show you something and then we'll shout and go and, and, and run out of here. Now, let me show you something. Now, you understand, when we're talking about confessing the word, now, uh, we know Philippians 4.19. Most people know Philippians 4.19. But, but that's like a coupon verse. You really can't use the coupon if you ain't done the first part. In other words, it, it's got something that goes with it. Paul's talked about giving, and church, no church is involved with me concerning giving and receiving except you alone. But even in Thessalonica, you gave gift more than once for my needs. Not that I seek the gift, you know, not what I seek for myself, but I seek for the profit which increases to your account. I've received everything in full. I've re I have ample supply from what Epaphroditus has sent to me, a fragrant aroma and a separate sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And now my God shall supply, watch this, all your needs. My God shall supply all what? Your needs. I like uh, one translation says, New Living's translation says, and this same God who takes care of me will supply all your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ. So I gave you some examples last week, uh, several examples I've given you, that in situation, minister friends, two different minister friends that I knew, angel appeared to them, and they, and both in financial situation, or they, one angel, I told you last week, Dr. Dufresne, they said, he said, what are you waiting on? And they said, we're waiting on the faith command. And he said, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And they were gone. So you want to say something in connection with your needs. And if you're a giver, and if you're a tither, you have every right to say, my God shall supply, will take care of me. And he takes care of me in grand style. Everybody say grand style. Now, now, this is what I want you to see in connection with, with, with finances and harvest. James chapter 5. Now, hold your place. Uh, we're going to come back right here, and we'll finish up with something. James 5. How many believe we're in the last days? Uh, and there, there's, there's lots of all kinds of stuff in the Bible that reveals we're in the last days. We're actually, we're in the last of the last days. And James chapter 5, watch this, verse 1. James 5, 1 says, Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments have become moth-eaten. Your gold and your silver have rusted and their rust will be a witness against you and will consume your flesh like fire. And notice this statement. It is in the last days that you have stored up your treasure. Now, this, this particular, this first part, this is not necessarily directed to Christians as much as it is a prophetic statement. Number one, God is not against people being, God is not against people being rich because he's given you power to get wealth. So this is not really contradicting. God's not against uh, people having wealth. He's not against you being rich. He wants you to be blessed so you can be a blessing. He wants you rich so you can fund gospel, fund the harvest. And he wants you blessed to be able to do, and he richly gives us all things to enjoy. We looked at that uh, scripture in 1 Timothy 6, 17, last uh, Sunday. But... Uh, Again, rich isn't what we have, it's who we are. And you've got to understand that rich is what we become when we get saved. So that's why I just look in the mirror when you get up and go, you rich. Richie rich. Middle name with an R, rich. <laughs> Amen. 
So what you have to understand something here. He's talking about it's in the last notice in the last days that you stored up treasure. One of the things he says, you're so, you know, did you know, I, 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 have, I didn't take time to look there. I've seen statistics, but there's more hoarding right now. That there's silver and gold and, and, and they say that there's only about 20% of the $100 bills that are actually in circulation. Why? Because other, they're hoarding, the rest of it's being hoarded, or drug dealers have it, or whatever. But there's just, there's cash is out there. Stuff is out there. And, and there's people right now, listen, there's not a money problem in, this, in, the, in the world. The world wants you to think that because the only way the devil can operate is through fear. That's the way he operates in the tribulation period. You got, you know, if you don't have the mark, you can't buy or sell. And so he, he dominates through fear. But what you have to understand is there's not a money problem. There's not a money shortage. There's, there's, there, there, are people, there are people on this planet, all up, there's tons of people on this planet that have so much, they don't even know what to do with it. They couldn't even spend it all. They can't even spend the interest. So when God starts talking about people, you know, it's in the last days that you've stored up stuff. See, they think they've stored it up for their last days. T-H-E-I-R. There, but what they've done is stored it up, stored it up for the last days. Because God's got a purpose for it in the last days, which we are in. Everybody say, we're in the last days. So there's really no money issue in the world. It's a location issue. And how many know the, de- uh, the enemy likes to hold it up and the angels know where to go get it? All right, I'm going to finish this up for you. All right, so verse 4. Watch this, verse 4. Behold the pay, that would be wages, of the laborers who mowed your fields and which have been withheld by you. In other words, there's money that's been withheld cries out against you. And the outcry, now notice, and the outcry of those who did the harvesting has reached the ears of the Lord of Seboeth. I want you to underline that word if you've got your Bible. Lord of Seboeth. You know what the Lord of Seboeth is? That is the Lord of armies. That would be angel armies. Hallelujah. Lord of Seboeth means Lord of armies, the Lord of the host or heavenly host. Hallelujah. So money, you could say it like this. Money, there's a, money has a, is specifically allocated for harvest. And if it is, you don't want to hang on to it. In other words, God wants to bless you, make you a blessing. So don't, don't get all you can, can on you get, and sit on you can. That's what a lot of people do. All right? But you could say it like this. Just looking at this, you can see money talks. Notice he says... The, the wages are crying out. The money's crying out. What's it crying out? I'm supposed to be in some different hands. All right? Now, this is where angels come in because the Lord of Seboeth, like I said, it means Lord of armies. Now, it's interesting. Uh, think about Jacob. Remember Jacob? Who did Jacob wrestle with? Well, he wrestled with an angel. You go back to Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Uh, the Bible says, actually, as angel, you know, he's fixing to meet Esau, and he really doesn't know how Esau's going to respond to him. Because the last time he, he, was, he ran for his life from Esau, he got a stick and a little pack. And now he says, Lord, he's thanking the Lord. He said, Lord, I left with a stick and, you know, just some, my, my underwear and some green beans that Mama gave me, some beef jerky. <laughs> and he said, now I'm coming back with... He separated his, he, he made it, he made it, he separated his family and all that he had into two different, two different packs. But the Bible says right there in, in verse 1 of Genesis 32, that as he's coming to a certain place, it says he saw, he said the angels, angels met him. He called it angel armies. In other words, he just saw, as he's coming to a certain place, he just sees a bunch of angels. Wonder why that? Well, why would he see a bunch of angels? Well, number one, he's afraid that Esau is going to take care of him. And so, so he sends out gifts and stuff. And, you know, everything, we know the story. Everything went good. But that night, he sends everybody ahead. But that night, he, sleep, you know, he, he wrestles with that angel all night. Anybody remember what he was wrestling? He got to the end, and the angel says, let me go. And he said, no, what? I'm not going to let you go to what? Till you bless me. And did he get blessed? Yeah, he got blessed. And the angel said, your name's no longer Jacob, but Israel. It means a prince with God and men. You have striven with God and men and have prevailed. Jacob was blessed. Israel changed his name. Got blessed. How many know we don't have to work for our blessing? How many know we don't have to wrestle for our blessing? We just receive our blessing. 
Jesus already paid for it. All right? And that includes everything that you would need for supply. Hallelujah. So God is Lord of the angels. He's Lord of the armies. And you see money in connection with that. Finance is in connection with that. Your, uh, uh, God supplying everything that you need. So angels have a lot to do with bringing in harvest and finances, and he can do it from the world system. He wants to get it into the hands of the church. Uh, I think that's where one of the Proverbs that says the wealth of the wicked is laid for the what? The just, the righteous. Well, again, it's not just all of a sudden he's taking it from one place and putting it in your bank account, but it has to do with us reaching souls and bringing those people in, and, and also it has to do with you being wise in the affairs of life and angels helping us. Because, again, he does know where to get it. He knows how to get stuff to us. Hallelujah. Angels are designed by God to help you prosper. So if you have a business, you should, you should be having supernatural connections. You should have divine appointments all the time, clients, customs, favor, raises, bonuses in your job, benefits, promotions. You should be claiming it. You should be believing it. You should be expecting that you are going up. I mean, look at Joseph, the life of Joseph. He... The Bible says he prospered. He, he, was, he was on top. He ended up on top everywhere he was. He had a good attitude. He also had vision. But go back to Psalm 103 and we'll stop. I told you to hold your place in Psalm 103. Now watch this. If this don't bless you, I don't know what's wrong. Now watch this. Remember, uh, the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of angel armies, the Lord of hosts. So now watch this. All right, you ready? You say, Pastor, you got any more scripture references for what you're talking about? I'm, I'm, that's why I brought you to this point right here. How many believe? Well, I'll just read it, and then we'll see if you, if you want to believe it or not. Psalm 103, verse 21 says, Bless the Lord, all you his... Now, we read verse 20. They obey the voice of his word. Verse 21, Bless the Lord, all you his host, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Well, we see he, they, they do the will of God, but now notice he says they do his pleasure. So I guess that means if God takes pleasure in it, then they're excited about doing what pleases God. Now, we know faith pleases God. So if we're speaking the word, we're speaking words of faith. And without faith, we can't please God. So if God's pleased, when we're getting over in faith, we're getting in faith about our situation. We're getting in faith over something supernatural that we need or we're needing help. We need finances. Uh, we're believing God to do more, to do some more than we've ever done before. Why is God stirring us, stirring us about this? Well, because think about this. Psalm 35, verse 27. I, I thought you might want to know this verse in connection with this verse. Psalm 35, 27 says, Let them what? Shout for joy and be glad. I mean, you don't get anything sad. Faith doubts, complains, and despairs, but faith rejoices, gives thanks, and is glad. So let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause, and let them say continually, what are you supposed to be saying? Let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in what? The prosperity of his servant. So if God has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant and the angels like to do his pleasure, what do you think they'd like to be doing? Helping you prosper. Did you get something out of this tonight? Say they want to help me prosper. Because God's pleased when I prosper. So the angels, angels do what? They, they like to do his pleasure. Everybody say, do pleasure. Amen. So if God likes it, if it pleases him, they want to make sure that they want to put a smile on God's face. So what is that? But there's a Godward side and there's a manward side. Some people really struggle with that man we're saying, well, it's all up to Jesus. We just, Jesus qualified us, and yes, he did, and his blood qualified us, and yes, we don't have to work for it, we receive it, but there, there's the manward side, which is you, you by faith, claiming what you need, what belongs to you, and exercising the word. Or if you just read through the first few chapters of Hebrews, he says, holding fast your confession of faith without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. Through faith and patience, we inherit the promises. So yeah, you're going to have to hold fast. Galatians, don't grow weary in well-doing. In due season, you'll reap if you faint not. How are you going to reap? How, how's God? It's not, a, you, it's not your job to figure it out. You just hold steady. You just keep thanking God. You just keep doing your abundance. And you just get up in the morning and say, I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Stand up with me. You don't get up and say, I, I, I rejoice because this is the day that the Lord has made. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad. I'm going to, let, I'm going to say continually, let the Lord be magnified. Who takes delight in the process. Why would the Lord want you saying that on a regular basis? So you finally get it. 
that God takes delight. God, God, uh, does not, uh, God does not take pleasure in our lack. God does not take pleasure in our insufficiency. No, when he supplied it all, when the banquet table's out there, that's why he said, if you just get excited about it, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We just love you. We thank you, Lord, for the truth that sets us free, that you want us to come to the knowledge of the truth. And there is truth in this area. Lord, I'm convinced there's things that we have yet to even see in, in the areas of truth and the revelation and the truth that, that can dawn in our heart. And so, Lord, we thank you for helping us to see more and to understand more. And some of these things, I know we need to hear it again and again and again and look at it and read it. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for showing us more and more truth. Hallelujah. So we can walk in freedom and liberty and we can experience all the abundant life that you came to give us. And so we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Lift your hands one more time. Let's just praise the Lord a minute. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for the ministering angels, ministering servants. Hallelujah. Sent forth to render service. Hallelujah. And so we thank you. That would even include healing that we need. They can bring, they can bring divine healings. Hallelujah. They're, they're involved in all kinds of ways and forms and different, different ways. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. You're unlimited. And you're an almighty God. And so we thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God gives grace to who? The humble. Hallelujah. He's opposed to the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. James says, receive with humility the engrafted word, which is able to save your soul. That means renew you to a point that you're, you're walking in more, you're seeing more, you're developing more, and you're what? Exercising the word of faith. Hallelujah. Everybody say the word of faith. Hallelujah. That you're speaking those words. Paul said, I believe, therefore I spoke. We believe, so we speak. So if you believe these things, go ahead and talk about it. Why? Because it'll keep, it'll keep you more conscious. We need to stay aware of, of these things. Be, be more conscious of spiritual things than you are the natural things. Like, uh, remember, like Elijah said, there's more for us. He was surrounded by the enemy, but he said there's more for us than against us. So that'll set us up for where we want to go next time. Amen. You glad you came tonight? Well, love on about three or four people before you go. Tell somebody you're glad that they came. You can be dismissed. Love you guys. Bless you. Keep looking at these things. You'll see more. Thank you, sir. How are you doing?